We're back. It's the 97.9 WRMF Morning Show. You know, every now and then we get to speak to some big people. And this gentleman you may know from Mambo Kings, Philadelphia. Interview with a vampire, Mask of Zorro. Then let's move on to the Shrek series. And more importantly today, Antonio Banderas in Puss in Boots. I love you. Oh, my God. Good morning <laughs> to you, too. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. Did you ever think that Puss in Boots would put you into a new realm and be a huge star because of your voice with the smaller generation? No, let's just face it. Um, you know, I came to this country without even speaking the language. So if there was something in my mind that I thought, ah, there is something that I cannot do, that is going to be animation movies. And here I am, you know, I mean, only in America. Puss was not in the first Shrek film. That's correct. And then you started in the second. So how, how did that all come to be, Antonio? They called you and said, we have this cat, we want you to be the voice, and you probably went, huh? Yeah, actually, pretty much like that. Um, I said almost an unconditional yes, because I saw the first first track and, um, and I loved it and I thought it was a huge U-turn for animation movies so when they called me I, I was very proud just for the call but then I never thought that the character was going to go that far but uh, people loved him and here we are with his own movie and will there be another Puss in Boots? that is up to the audience it is a moment that the movie doesn't belong to us anymore it belongs to the audiences and they have to make a decision about you know if they go they, they see it uh, in, enough <laughs> For the studio, they will decide just to go. I think, actually, the character has still a lot of potential. Antonio Benditas, our guest on the morning show here at 97.9 WRMF. Do you ever, like, go to the grocery store and some woman comes up to you and says, just say my name in your sexiest voice? <laughs> Sometimes what I happen is that I am in the, in the grocery store and a woman with his kid with five years old, they come and they say to their kid, um, look, that guy, you see that guy? That's Puss in Boots. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the kids, they normally look at me and say, they look at the mother and say, no, mom, this is a guy. <laughs> yeah, who's this man? That's not Puss in Boots. It's not a cat, ma. What's your problem? <laughs> Yeah, but then they make me do the voice. And you, know, you have to show my kid that, that actually you are the voice of Puss in Boots. And I am there in the middle of a supermarket just doing, I am Puss in Boots. <laughs> the whole entire day. You know, it's fun and I, I, I enjoy that, actually. I, I love that. I, I, actually, the, the fact that I can work for, for kids, um, and not so much kids, because uh, the movie appeals to uh, audiences of um, different ages too but but it's a pleasure because I I am a father too you know and um, and I know the effect that this movie is producing in, in kids um, I was a kid too and I remember movies at that time that produced an impact on me you know it's a beautiful thing well, Antonio I kind of want to switch gears just a little bit I have to ask you about this other movie not a lot of people know about it Puss in Boots big family friendly flick everybody's rushing out to see it and then you've got this other seedy dark really cutting movie called The Skin I Live In that's in theaters at the very same time. How's that working? In a way, you know, it's kind of a metaphor of what my life as an actor has been. You know, having these two movies completely different. I mean, they cannot be more distant uh, from each other. Um, uh, in a way, fulfill what I want as an actor. You know, just to visit many different genres, many different styles. And, uh, and it's kind of interesting that these two movies are open practically at the same time in USA. Yeah. Okay, you've been married for a number of years. How do you pull that one off? Many people ask me about the, the secret of my marriage. And it just is reduced the explanation to one word, which is love. I mean, we, we still love each other after 17 years that we met each other, and um, we have both of us a very strong um, family concept, you know, floating over our whole entire relationship and um, we allow ourselves to change during this time and to don't be afraid of losing what we had but entering in new stages of our uh, relationship and I think that's what is keeping us you know alive as a couple you know and in a very difficult world you know Hollywood is not the best place to, to be uh, you know to, to long relationships let's just face it not at all you act you <laughs> sing you dance you direct uh, you cultivate vineyards I do. I, I have a, a vineyard um, in Spain. We produce wine, and actually, we we just signed with a, a distributor here in America to distribute our wine. Um, in the next couple of months, probably, it's going to be everywhere. What's it called? Uh, the, the general brand is called Anta 
banderas. I look forward to it. Just before right. you leave, Antonio, I got one favor. Okay, go ahead. Can you just say, I love you, Jennifer? Uh, I can do that. <clears throat> Let me see if my wife is not around. No, she's not. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love you, Jennifer. Oh, I'm melting. I can't <laughs> thank you enough. We wish you the best of success. Please thank give your you. wife and kid a nice big fat hug for all of us here at WRMF. I will from you. Bye-bye.